we come to you tonight, Lord, and we just want to worship you, Father. We just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Father, I just thank you for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do, Lord. Thank you, Father. Is this on? Thank you, Father, that you are with us, Lord, and you have kept us, Father, through the week. We thank you, Father, for the many Testimonies, Lord, that you have brought forth this week, Lord. We just give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise for them, Lord, and we just continue to ask that you would continue to make a way in those situations, Lord, that are in our lives that need a touch from you, Lord. And Father, we just come to you tonight and we pray, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that you are in this place. We thank you, Lord, that you're making a way where there seems to be no way, Lord. You're bringing it forth and you're bringing it out, Lord. And you're exposing what needs to be exposed. And you're bringing forth those who need to be brought forth, Father. Lord, I just, I just worship you, Lord. I just thank you, Father. I ask, Lord, that you would fill my mouth with your words, Father. That I would pray what you want to be prayed, Father. That you want to come forth, Lord. Jesus. We just thank you, Father. We just worship you, Lord. We just give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. <laughs> just like correct all this. I don't even know what to pray. I'm like wrecked all of a sudden. We just worship you, Lord. That's where you go. <laughs> we just worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. That's all I can say. I don't. There's just no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you. It's by your grace and your strength that we do what we do every single day, Lord. We thank you for that grace, and we thank you, Father, that you make a way in situations that seem so impossible, Lord, but you are there. You are there for the good of those who are called, according to your word, Lord. to do, Lord, in this earth with the exposing and the, and the bringing forth, Father. We just thank you that you are there. Lord, give us strength to stand in this time frame of not knowing the outcome of certain situations, Lord, where there's wars and rumors of wars, Father. Give us strength to stand. Show us how to pray, Lord. Show us, Father, how to speak forth your words, to speak forth your praise, to speak forth what you want. I thank you, Father, for your protection upon your people, the protection on those who are here tonight and those who are here listening. We thank you for the protection upon the families in this country. And around the world, Lord, we pray, Father, for protection in this time of, of just an upheaval of morals and, and humanity, Lord, the things that are coming forth, Father, from the enemy, Lord, we just bind them in Jesus' name. We bind the plans and the schemes of the enemies upon us. We bind the plans and the, and the schemes of the enemy upon us everyone around us, Lord. We thank you that you are with us. Give us vision and give us wisdom, Father, and direction on where to plant our feet next, Father, and where to go next, Lord. Give us wisdom on how to 
push forth for what you want in this earth, Father. Show us how to pray. Lord, I thank you for the prophetic words and the, and the dreams that are coming forth, Father. Give us understanding of those dreams and visions, Father, that we know how to pray into what you're showing us. Lord, we pray for Israel. We ask for your protection upon Israel, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are with them and that you are keeping them, Lord. And with everything that's going on in that region, we just speak peace. It's peace to that region. Peace to those people. But we know, Father, that it's the fight between the, the seeds of Abraham, the Ishmael seed and the Isaac seed. And we know there will be wars and rumors of wars, but, Father, we pray for peace, peace to come to that region. We thank you, Father, that what you spoke in the Bible, what you spoke over the centuries, Father, will come to pass according to what you have spoken, Lord. I thank you for the exposing in America. We just ask, Father, that you would show us how to pray for the certain situations in America, Lord. We just speak to this country and we come and we call forth the remnant to come forth. And we pray, Father, that this that this country would turn back to you, back to the to the place that the covenant that was made between the forefathers and you, Lord, for this country. We ask, Father, that you would not forget that covenant. And we thank you that you have not forgotten that covenant, Lord. And you said those who would humble themselves would heal their land and turn from their wicked ways and you would heal their land, Lord. We speak that upon America. And we pray for Trump that you would bring forth Trump, Father. There's been prophetic words spoken that he would be president twice, that he would be president again. And we just speak against the enemy that is trying to uproot what you're trying to bring forth, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you're with him. We thank you, Father, that you're with those who you've placed around him. We thank you, Lord, you will raise him up and bring him through, Father, as you've spoken, Lord. And that no weapon formed against him and his family shall prosper in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that he will serve his second term. And to turn all of those things that were brought forth within the last four years around. We thank you, Father, that you've not forgotten America. But we speak truth over America. That you will turn back to your God and you will be who the Lord has called you to be. We just thank you, Lord, for this ministry, and we ask, Father, that you would pour out your spirit upon this ministry like never before, Lord. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing and what you're about to do, Lord. We speak to those things that are coming forth. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that you're bringing them forth, Lord. And we just come against anything the enemy might try to do, any, any division that might try to come. We speak against it in Jesus' name. We bind every plan of the enemy to stop what the Lord has spoken over this house. And we speak forth your truth upon it, Lord. We thank you, Father, that what you said about this place, it will come to pass. And we thank you, Lord, that you're raising up those who are with us, those who are in the, in the partnership with us, Father. We thank you for the raising up of those. We thank you, Father, for those who are coming to partner. We thank you, Lord, that you give them wisdom and understanding and vision, Father, on how to partner and what to do. And we just pray right now for Angela, and we thank you, Father, for her. We thank you as the leader of the house, Lord. We just we lift her up to you, Lord, and we speak strength upon her body, strength upon her mind, her, her soul. Strength upon her mind. We thank you, Lord, that you're bringing her forth as you've called it, Father. And no weapon formed against her and her family shall prosper in Jesus' name. We ask, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon her and anoint her even for greater things. We thank you, Lord, for the other for those who have come to, alongside her to partner, Father. We just speak 
over them strength to stand. We thank you, Lord, for those things that you have for us in the future, Father. We thank you that you're bringing forth and you're realigning everything the way that it should be, Father. We thank you, Lord, that what the enemy had tried to do in the past and tried to take down this ministry, we thank you, Father, that you are with us and that you are with them, Father, and that they are standing here today, Lord, all of them, Father. We thank you that it will come to pass. I thank you, Lord, for working on all of our characters, Lord. I thank you that you're bringing us forth in the character that you want us to walk in, Father, and that all those tough times of learning how to stand, learning how to be patient, learning how to how to um, overcome, learning how to lay down our flesh and walk in your spirit, Lord, I thank you that you give us strength. I thank you that you walk with us in it, Father, to bring us to that full fullness of your perfection upon us, Lord. I ask that you would pour out your spirit upon us, that we would know your love greater than before. And I thank you, Lord, that you will continue to bring us forth. I ask, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit on each and every one of us here, Lord. You would, that we would know you deeper than before, more intimately, Father. That we would continue to grow in you and be known by you. And I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, Father, and all that you're about to do.
pardoning and forgiveness. I praise you, Lord, because your word is true. Your mercies are new every morning. I ask, Lord, that you have mercy on this country and every individual in it. I pray your grace upon all of us who love you and need you desperately. And I thank you, Lord, that you are setting the captives free. I thank you, Lord, that you are bringing justice to those who need it and deserve it. Your justice. Your justice. I thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon President Trump and his entourage of attorneys, that your spirit is around about him at all times, that he walks in your presence. I thank you, Lord, that the outcome of all of these accusations against him will prove to be nothing. And I thank you, Lord, for his protection, his families, his staff, his crew members, his teams, Thank you, Lord, for loosing angels, angels out of heaven, around about him, and around about all those who love you. I thank you, Lord, that you are making the crooked places straight for those who are trapped in a system that is not from you. I thank you, Lord, that we can speak to that mountain because we have faith of a mustard seed. And we call to that mountain and we say, Be thou removed and fall into the sea, and it shall be done. I call to the mountain of despair to the mountain of anxiety, to the mountain of depression, to the mountain of suicide. And I say, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And it is done. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you give us each and every day to strengthen our faith in one way or another. I thank you that no matter what we do, your hand is still there for us to grab and hold on to. I thank you, Lord, for the firm foundation that you have given us in Christ Jesus, our cornerstone. I thank you, Lord, for the light of your love that shines so brightly. children and we are so favored in your sight and in the sight of men. I thank you, Lord, that you are calming the storms of the sea and you are rising up in power and might to destroy the enemy that comes at your day. And we will not be afraid of the terror at night because you are with us and your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Thank you that we are trees planted by rivers of living water that no matter what we do or touch, it shall prosper because we love you. 
and that you love us even more. Thank you, Lord, for the prophets who let us know ahead of time what to do and how to do it and what's coming and how to prepare. And I thank you, Lord, for what is coming. I thank you, Lord, that you are protecting us in the land of Goshen. I thank you, Lord, that we have the blood of the Lamb upon our doorposts and in our hearts. That no matter what the enemy tries to do, it will not work. It will come crashing down on them. I thank you, Lord, for making a way in the desert. I thank you, Lord, for your riches and glory that you have bestowed upon us. I thank you, Lord, for the arising of the church in the truth and fullness of your word. I declare and decree there will be no more haphazard sermons that tell the half-truths and not the whole truths. That your churches will awaken and start to preach the entire gospel. That they will preach that there is power and authority in your name. That they will preach we have an enemy who thinks he is mightier than our God. But I thank you, God, that you who live in me is greater than he who is in the world. I thank you, God, that you are opening up our eyes, raising us up into your throne room that we can look down from your perspective and see the grand vastness of your hand moving in each one of our lives. that you are blowing back the darkness, that you are cutting them off at the root. That his justice is coming and that we know the end of the story. And because we belong to you and because you love us so much, we win because you always do. And that is part of our inheritance because we've been adopted into your kingdom, into your family. Father, I ask that you open the hearts of those that are needing to know how worthy they are in your sight. How important they are in your kingdom. How powerful they are. And that you use them in a mighty, mighty way. I cancel all fear and regret and shame. Because that is not of you, Father. So we cut that food off from the enemy to grow in our minds and in our souls. We take those thoughts and we take them captive because they are lies of the enemy. And we'll replace those thoughts with the truth of your word that says we are the apple of your eye. That we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you would lay down your life, be tortured and tormented and ripped apart and shed your blood to cover our sins 
so that they are no more. I thank you, Lord, for filling the gap between the Father and us. Thank you, Lord, that you judge the heart and not the soul. I thank you, God, that your tender mercies and faithfulness to us reign even today. Father, I ask that you would flood this land. Flood it, Father. Flood it with your righteousness and with your presence. Flood it so strongly that people will wake up and see that you are God. I ask that you Flood the prisons with your presence and your Holy Spirit power. I ask that your wind blow and remove the evil and the corrupt and the sick, depraved minds and actions of those who are in there. Handcuff the robbers that are stealing from others inside there. Set the innocent free. Set the time served free. Bust open those doors, Lord, and let them out. We hear that nothing can stop what is coming. exactly what that means but I want to apply that to the prison doors where prisoners are being held captive beyond what they need to be nothing can stop God nothing can stop the Lord from what is coming for those people who refuse you that you have turned over to their own depravity Father, I pray for the children and the people that are being trafficked, even as we speak, that it will come to a stop, that you would send your angels to stop it, that you would send any other angelic entities that belong to you, holy, holy God. Send them on assignment to save those children and women and men that are being used and abused and tortured. Draw your bloodline around them, Lord. No more, no more children being taken and sacrificed. Thank you so much for your remnant that love you. Use us, Lord, to reach others, to guide and direct and teach them what religion is not. Freedom from religion, Lord, I ask. Freedom from religion. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 
Father, the people that you've put into my life that have taught me so much. Especially Pastor Angela. Because I have learned so much from her. And Father, I pray for the salvation of all of my children. Because your word says that all of my children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace. I declare and decree that right now over my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and even their future spouses. That they will be handpicked by you for them. And they will heed the call when you call. I pray for the unspoken prayer requests that I received today. That you would touch those people in their lives. That you would intervene. That you would heal them. That you would strengthen them. That you would not take your hand off of them. That they would be humbled before you, Lord. And you will raise them up because you are the lifter of our heads. And you will leave the 99 and you will go after that one. Go get them, Father. Go get them. I just praise you and praise you. you are such a good, good father. Help me, Lord, to become more like you. In Jesus' name.
has also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Father, I thank you that you are giving life, life, l'chaim, life, and I speak life, I speak life over Israel, I speak life over your people, I speak life, Father, over the bride, I speak life over the believing ones, your believers. We call forth life and those that you've called, Father, for the heir of salvation that you have marked. You have marked already. I thank you, Father. Lord, you said in verse 7, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Oh, I thank you, Father, for the glorious, the glorious glory. For the ministry ministry of righteousness exceeds much, much more in glory. I thank you for even what has made and was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels for it was passing away was glorious and what remains is much more glorious. Father, I thank you for the things that we have heard and seen, Father, Lord, and through history, reading, Father, but I thank you. What remains is much more glorious. What's to come, Father, the latter glory, I thank you. Father, your words is in Verse 12, therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were hard. For until the day the same veil remains unlifted and the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away, taken away in Christ. But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, verse 16, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we are all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, glory from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, Father, I thank you. Here, unveiled faces, we stand beholding as in a mirror the glory of you, O Lord Jesus. We are being transformed I thank you for the transformation in each and every person, Father, that comes here. I thank you, Father, that this is your place. And, Father, you are leading by spirit and truth. I thank you, Father, that you're teaching and you're guiding and you are bringing us 
to understanding, to wisdom, to knowledge. Father, to counsel. Lord, to great reverence of you, God. The sevenfold spirit. Might. Oh, I thank you, Father. And I thank you, Father, that, Lord, you said we have received mercy. We have received mercy. And your word says in chapter 4, verse 1, we do not lose heart. Your disciples say this. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Verse 2, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in the craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifesting a manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Lord, in verse 3 it says, but even our, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age have blinded, who do not believe, least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Father, I thank you. Verse 5 says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone out into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your kingdom. I thank you, my king. It says in verse 6, For it is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We, verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that the treasure that each and every one of your children carry in the earthen vessel here, that the excellence of the power, your power, is all of you, God, and none of us. I thank you. Your word says that we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. That we are perplexed, but not in despair. That we are persecuted, but not forsaken. That we are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Hallelujah. Our in our bodies. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. But the life of Jesus 
also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So that the death is working in us, but life in you. Life. So Father, I thank you for life within us. Father, I thank you that there's healing because we are in, in Christ. In Christ Jesus. And Lord, your word says that you would take the sickness from us. You would take sickness, sickness out of us. Father, I thank you. I thank you that it says in verse 13, but since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise up us with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of of God, for it is your goodness. Lord, you said in verse 16, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. And while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Oh, Father, I thank you that we look to the eternal we keep our eyes, our gaze onto you. And Father, I thank you that Israel keeps their eyes and their gaze onto you. And I thank you, Father, that yes, you will stand and you will defend Israel. Israel is forever and ever and ever. And I thank you, Father, for that. Lord, I thank you for the Jerusalem. I thank you for Benjamin Netanyahu. I thank you, Father, for the, the key players that you have called forth to be at this time. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the truth of your gospel and the kingdom, your kingdom. I thank you for the kingdom. I thank you, Father, for the victories that you've given us, that we are a child of the living God and that we are the heir of God, that we are a joint heir with Christ Jesus, that we are a new creation in Jesus and all the old has passed away and all things have become new. We thank you, Father, that we are a chosen generation, that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Father, I thank you that we are not under the guilt or condemnation. Father, I thank you that we refuse discouragement because it is not of you. I thank you, Father, God, that you are the God of all encouragement. I thank you that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus, has set us free, free from the law of the sin and death. We do not listen to Satan's accusations. He is a liar and father of lies. Right now we gird up our loins with the truth and sin has no dominion over any of one of us under the sound of my voice. Sin you have no dominion over Stacy. Sin you have no dominion over Susan. Sin you have no dominion over Lisa. Sin you have no dominion over me. Sin you have no dominion over Deborah. You have no dominion. You have no dominion over Lizette. You have no dominion 
over. Natalie, you have no dominion. You have no dominion over K. You have no dominion over Bert. You have no dominion over aim for the heart. Father, I thank you that we flee from temptations. Father, because we do not, we do not want to sin against you. But if we do sin, we know that we have the advocate, Christ Jesus. And he is with you, Father. We confess our sins and forsake them right now. We confess, God, you are faithful. You are just to forgive us, cleansing us from all unrighteousness. We are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And we are overcomers because of the blood of Jesus and because of the word of our testimonies. Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us can prosper. I thank you, Father, that we shall confute every tongue that rises up against us in judgment. Our mind is renewed by the word of God. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. We cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. And we bring every thought captive into obedience to the truth. We accept that we are the accepted in the beloved. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. And nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We are righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we are not the slaves of sin, but we are of righteousness. We are a slave unto righteousness. I thank you, Father that we continue in your word and we know your truth and the truth sets us free because Christ has set us free. We are free indeed. We are being delivered out of the dominion of darkness and we are abiding into the kingdom of God and we are not intimidated by the enemy's lies. He is defeated. For this purpose, Christ, came into the world to destroy the works of the evil one. We submit to God. We resist the devil. The enemy flees from us now and in terror because the Lord lives in us, mightily in us. We give the devil no opportunity and we give the devil no place to fear. We give no place to fear in our lives. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Terror shall not come near us because the Lord is the strength of our lives. He always causes all of us to triumph in Christ Jesus. We are, we are overcomers and we are triumphantly standing in victory through Christ Jesus. In Christ, we are the head. We are not the tail. We are above and we are not beneath. And a thousand will fall at our side and 10,000 upon our right hand. And none shall touch us. And we are seated in Christ in the heavenly places far above all this principalities and powers. We have been given all power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall injure us. No longer will the enemy oppress us. Right now, right now we defeat him by the authority that Christ has given us. We are more than conquerors through Christ. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the things that you're doing. You're putting line upon line and precept upon precept. I thank you for the things that you're bringing forth. I thank you for new connections. I thank you, Father, for just wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. I thank you, Father, even for, even for Kevin, Pastor Kevin. I thank you, Father. 
I thank you for the things that you're doing. And Lord, I thank you that you will continue to bring us into all truth, all understanding, knowing that this is the kingdom realm. It is time for the kingdom, the preaching of the kingdom, the preaching of the kingdom of God, the preaching of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father. It is the kingdom. It is about your kingdom. Thank you. We have been brought into your kingdom, grafted into your ways. Father, I thank you for the church. Yes, I do. But Lord, I thank you that it is time for your kingdom realm, your kingdom ways, your kingdom truth. Father, I thank you that you hold us, Lord, and that you, right now, you would just hold our hearts. Father, I thank you that you said that you would expedient in the times so that the very elect would not be deceived because there is a chance and a possibility of the very elect being deceived. Father, I thank you. Keep us. Keep us, oh God. Keep us. Keep us, oh God. And Lord Jesus, purify us. Fire, fire, consuming fire. Burn within us. Father, I thank you that you lay the ax to every, every demonical teaching, every wayward teaching. Father, every, every wrong doctrine of teaching Lay the axe to it. In me, start with me. Father, I want to be yours and only yours. I want to do what you have called me to do. I want to take up my five stones and I want to sling the Goliaths that you've asked me to sling and, and to take down. Not by of my strength, but by your glory and by your hand. Father, I thank you that you've said this is Miracle City. I thank you. Kelsey City, you are Miracle City. And you will turn onto the Lord. And you, city officials, you will recognize the King of Glory and you will know and you will run this city with a reverence fear of God. I thank you for our mayor. I thank you, Father, for the assistant mayor. I thank you, Father, for those that you've placed upon in the commissions. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. Purify it. Purify it, purify it, purify it. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the favor that we have. Lord, I lift up the parks, the park worship. And I thank you, Father, that you are already prepared and you're already preparing the ground. I thank you for the angels right now ministering to the people that you've already called to, to direct them. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the testimonies of transforming and transformed lives. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for Angelica from Publix. Oh, I thank you. I thank you, Father. She is such a beautiful soul. I thank you. I thank you, Father. And Lord, I lift up her and her son. Father, I thank you that you put her in our pathways, and I thank you that you will bring her here on the appointed times that she is to be. I thank you, Father, that you bring forth all, all, Father, of the silver and the gold that is in her. And I thank you. Lord, help her. 
I thank you for the deliverance and the healing for her. In Jesus' name. I thank you for Kyle. Lord, I thank you that you're, you've actually placed him in the, the certain place and you have your hand upon him. I thank you for the beautiful protection that you are giving him in the prison. I thank you, Father, that you're, you are bringing him out. I thank you that justice is being served. I thank you, Father, that you are fighting for, for Kyle. And I thank you, Lord, that you've not left him alone. You know right where he is. I thank you that he is coming out. I thank you for June or July. I thank you, Father, for the gained credit time. I thank you, Father, for the, the, the change in the atmosphere. I thank you that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Just as you shook and the chains rattled and, and the prison cell doors were open, I thank you that you're shaking and everything all around Kyle is being opened so that he can come forth. And I thank you, Father, for the truth. I thank you for the truth coming forth. And Lord, I thank you. We ask for we ask for mercy, mercy on those Father who had done done them wrong. We ask for mercy. But I thank you, Father, that you're bringing him home, and it's sooner. I thank you that he is finally having the situation turned because you are you are control. You are in control of this. It is by your perfect time. And not one minute sooner and not one minute later. I thank you for that. In Jesus mighty name. I lift up my intestine road of control Father. I lift up the businesses that are, are connected Father to you for the heart. I, I lift up the people that sow in and Father, connect Lord with offerings and tithings. And Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you bless them. I thank you, Father, that you multiply them and you hold back the devourer. And I thank you, Father, that you give and bring forth the witty witty minds and understandings. I thank you, Father, that you bless them and you stretch their tent pegs. And Father, you become the blessing, the blessing that you have promised forth, Father, for that. For health, prosperity, not just monetary, but Lord, that their souls would prosper. Even, even health unto them. The prosperity of health. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So I thank you, Father, for everything that you've done tonight. I know that you are here. I know the Holy Spirit is here. I thank you, Father, for the healing. I thank you for healing Lisa. I thank you for her kidneys. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the glorious, great report. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. So that any, um, any, any, uh, prayer requests that came in through there? So is there anything else that we need to speak and tell them? Any events? So for those who are wanting to come to the gathering, the announcements, the announcements. Um, so for the announcements tonight, we are announcing this Saturday, we are here at the gathering, 
doors open at 7 and we will be in worship at about 7.30. Uh, so Faith Farm, um, 10 a.m. Sunday at Faith Farm. The team will be over there leading worship and bringing forth in prophetic praise uh, over at Faith Farm. And there is, it's an opening um, for those who would like to go out there. It's the one on Boynton Beach. And you can just Google Boynton Beach Faith Farm, 10 o'clock in the morning, and we'll see you there. We just bless you all. Have a beautiful night.